What's up guys, Mega the Tech Guy here, and I have a fun fact for you. I happen to own a OnePlus 9 Pro and a OnePlus 10 Pro. So why is it that I use a OnePlus 7C Pro McLaren here in 2023 from 2019? Let's find out. I believe that Phones are getting really stale here in 2023. There is an argument to be had that the battery life and efficiency of the chips is getting to a point where it's amazing and it does all this stuff and MKBHD has talked about it with the Apple Find X6 Pro, but ultimately, for what you're getting, it is the law of diminishing returns. I feel like most people could use a phone from 2019, like the OnePlus 7C Pro McLaren edition here, and get away with it just fine because the Snapdragon 855 Plus holds up more than adequately here in 2023. It is so good. It's a great phone and a great chip built all into one. It has 12 gigs of RAM on this variant on the McLaren edition here. It actually has 12 gigs of RAM versus the 8 gigs of RAM that comes standard on the regular OnePlus 7 Pro. There was also a 6 gig variant of the OnePlus 7 Pro and a 12 gig variant that you could purchase. but. You can get it default here on the OnePlus 7C Pro McLaren Edition. There's a few other factors, obviously, between the OnePlus 7 Pro and the 7C Pro, where this one has 5G, that one does not, although they did offer a 5G version elsewhere that you could use on CDMA networks, so there, that's neither here nor there. The point is that you can get a phone from 2019, even 2018, I argue. Uh, there are some phones from 2018 that I believe you could still use here today in 2023, no problem. But the landscape today of smartphones, it's just not great because of how expensive these devices are and what you're getting out of them. Yes, the battery life is a huge deal, but you got fast charging even back in 2019 with the 30, you know, 30 watt fast charging. Yes, there is on the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro that I own, they do have 65 watt charging, which is much faster. And I love that. And that's actually one of the hugest reasons why like, I like going back to those phones and testing them out on, and just seeing how they are and how they hold up with their 120 hertz displays. But even with 90 hertz to 120 hertz, there's not that big of a difference. I did when I first went back to the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition uh, back in the beginning of 2022. I went down from a Galaxy S20 Plus with 120 hertz display to this 90 hertz, and I don't notice much of a difference. I think the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition holds up so well here in 2023 with all of its specs included. It was so future proofed that even in 2023, you could still use it and it holds up way better than any even budget phone today, you know. Warrant. Now, the downside is, is that you can't really purchase a OnePlus 7C Pro McLaren Edition here in 2023 on the refurbished market much anymore. They might have something, and if they do, I'll put it up on the display here, but from the last of what I saw of it, they did not have them on the market. You would have to find it on eBay used, which means there is degradation of the battery. So that is something to keep in mind, is that you are in the used market for these phones for 2019 and 2018 because there's not a lot of refurbished devices out in the wild. But I argue if you already have something from 2018 or 2019, you can use it just fine. Even in 2020, like these phones are just great. Even here in 2023, there's, they've stagnated in my opinion. And, and that's really the reason why I'm making this video is because you don't really need anything more than what these phones are giving you from that era. And I feel like there needs to be more innovation being made here in 2023. There is like the large sensors on the cameras and all that stuff, but if you put up the S23 Ultra versus the S21 Ultra, there isn't that big of a jump. Even with the S20 Plus versus the you know new series, they didn't have that huge of a jump. There are significant increases in sharpness and you know obviously the zoom cameras and the lenses are better and all that stuff over time, but it hasn't increased enough for me to warrant to step away from this device. And I've actually had some issues with the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro where the software itself, that's the opification of OnePlus has actually given me issues rather than helped me in my day to day. I actually find that the stability of my OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren is much better than those two devices and that's why I don't use them as my daily driver. I do try to go back to them occasionally, I'll use them a day here and there or a couple days here and there just to test them out because I do want to make more videos on those devices but it doesn't make sense for me to move away from the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren edition because it does everything I needed to do, it charges up rather quickly, it got a, a solid pair of cameras, you know, there's a triple camera set up on the back, it's got the pop-up camera, and that's also a huge deal is that it's so futuristic that it doesn't even have a hole punch in the display. So you got a full screen display that runs at Quad HD, 
you've got the pop-up camera, nothing interrupting your display experience. So that is something that's really huge to me is that I like entertainment and I watch a lot of videos because this is a passion of mine. I like to watch other creators as well and I'm using this device day to day and this serves me really well. It has in-display fingerprint scanner. It has all of the stuff that these new ones have. Yeah, with the OnePlus 9 Pro, you get a slightly better cameras with the Hasselblad. And then also with the OnePlus 10 Pro, you get that too and you get the ultra wide is a bit wider. You can get really wide. And that's cool, but taking photos from each of these devices and comparing them, it's not that much different. It's not so much different that you're going to be like, oh, well, I need to go to these new ones, you know? So that's where I'm kind of at. The software helps a lot in the dynamic range and taking these photos to the next level anyway. And I use a mirrorless Sony camera to film these videos. And if I need to take a top down or something like that, and I need to use a phone and use that camera on me, this phone will still serve me well for that purpose because it can still shoot in 4K. So I don't really see why I would need to upgrade to anything new because this device is serving me so well and that's where i'm at it's like so many people don't need to upgrade here in 2023 the landscape of phones is just not there and it's unfortunate because obviously if you it's time for you to upgrade you can upgrade and you can go to your carrier and get yourself an s23 ultra or the pixel 7 pro or any of these devices and you're going to be happy with them of course you are but like if you have an older device moving on it the, the grass isn't greener on the other side is what i'm trying to you know explain Things are rather stale and stagnant in that regard. So it doesn't really make any sense. Like even if you look at the speed between these devices, you can compare them side by side and there's no real difference. Like there's no logical difference. Like at some points, the OnePlus 7T Pro actually opens apps faster. Yes, the games load slightly faster on these devices, but is it so much more that you're like, man, I could have saved all that time. Like, no, it isn't. There's not so much time being saved between these things. Yes, synthetic benchmarks are going to show a higher increase in your GPU and your CPU scores. But you should not judge your phone off of benchmarks. You really just shouldn't. It should be the day-to-day -day use cases because you're using this phone for everything. It's replaced so many devices for so many people and it's, it's your Swiss Army knife that you use every single day. And with all of the things considered, I am actually getting a better experience out of the OnePlus 7C Pro McLaren than I would out of the OnePlus 9 Pro or the OnePlus 10 Pro. That's why I still use this phone even today. And that is something that is really flabbergasting to me is that we're like, I'm trying out all these new phones and I know that all these reviewers, they're showing you all these wonderful one inch sensors and all that stuff. And it's great, don't get me wrong. I love that things are still progressing. It's just that there's no wow factor anymore. It's very just bleh. And that's sad to me. Like, I, I don't like seeing that land, the landscape like this. So it gets me in kind of a fuss because of the fact that, like, I'm still using a phone from 2019 and I'm perfectly happy with doing so. That is, you know, weird to me because I have newer devices. I have used the S21 Ultra. I have used the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro. So for me, this is a really weird experience that I still go back to a phone that has a 90 hertz display, has smaller camera lenses, it has, you know, just a slower processor and all that stuff. It still has the 12 gigs of RAM, which does outbeat the OnePlus 10 Pro, which has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. This has 12 to 56. That's the biggest thing is there's no real reason for me to upgrade. And I, I, I would love for this phone to actually be upgraded into the 2023 landscape because this phone is kind of perfect for me. I know that it has the curved display and so does the OnePlus 9 Pro and so does the OnePlus 10 Pro. It's a little less prominent on those two devices, but on this device, it, the palm rejection is good enough that I'm not really worried. And I actually have a sandstone case that I put on the back of this phone anyway, so that's no, no trouble for me. I just wanted to state that to you guys that this is my opinion. You guys can have completely different opinions from me. I think if you do have something that you would like to say in regards to the landscape of phones and if you think that there is still innovation because of the flipping open phones and all that stuff there is, but what really would push you to get a phone nowadays if you still have one of these devices that just run better and are better? I would like to know your thoughts on that. Go ahead and leave a comment below to just tell me what your thoughts are. Have a discussion in the comments. Tell me what you guys are using. What phone are you using and why are you using it? Are you using a phone that's from 2018, 2019? Are you using a 2023 device? Are you using a 21 device, a 22 device? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in seeing what the community has to say about this because of course this is just one person's opinion and you could take it with a grain of salt, but I believe that things are so stagnant and stale that they have not grown in such a fashion that you should upgrade because this phone right here cost me 
when I bought it, you know, 365 bucks at the time, and the regular OnePlus 7 Pro has gone down, you know, to under 200 bucks even on eBay and stuff like that. So you can get the non McLaren version of this device with pretty much everything the same for much cheaper than anything that's out there. And in some cases, it actually beats it in speed for some apps day to day or matches it too. So that's also something to be aware of. You could spend under $200 to get a device that runs just as good. Yes, it's on end of life for software, so you're only getting up to Android 12 and Android 13 and the Android 14's on the horizon, but that is also something that like I really don't, I understand that you're supposed to be like, you should stay on the latest security updates and all that stuff. And yeah, sure, you should do that. It's probably recommended and I should recommend that to you guys, but ultimately as long as you're careful using your device you should be good with android 12 on your device for a while because even using android 7.0 nougat a lot of the apps still you work on my galaxy note 2 that i have so that i, I purchased and i put a, a android nougat on that and then a lot of the apps still work just fine tiktok included facebook all that stuff still works on it so like if android 7.0 is still supported with a lot of apps then android 12 is going to be supported a lot longer as well so you're not really immediately, this phone's dead because it's on Android 12 and not Android 13. And even so, the developer community for this device is really nice and they have options for you to go to the Pixel Experience ROM or Lineage OS to upgrade yourself to Android 13. And I'm sure when Android 14 drops for Lineage OS or Pixel Experience, they'll also have that as well. So there is the ROM community that can push you and give you more longevity in your device if you have something like this. So that's something to look into for my viewers here. I think that, you know, you really don't need to buy a new device, a new flagship. You can look at the older flagships. Even if you really wanted to go with a OnePlus 9 Pro or OnePlus 10 Pro, you can. And those devices are going down in price as well. So that's something to also look forward to is into the future that obviously you can upgrade to some of these other devices. But in my personal opinion, I'm still using a OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren because it gives me a more stable experience day to day for everything that I do. I just don't want to compromise that at the end of the day. Even if it is for battery life, even if it is for fast charging, those things aren't upgraded enough that they warrant me switching. So that's it for that video today, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you dislike this video, go ahead and give it a dislike. If you really liked it, go ahead and hit subscribe and that notification bell to get more content from me. Otherwise, I've been Miggy the Tech Guy and I am out. Peace.